Hi, everyone. Good evening. Good afternoon, wherever you're joining in from today. My name is Rav and I'm the program manager here at React to London. Uh, before we get into the session, please take a moment to read our code of conduct. We're all here to learn. So please be respectful. Please be kind uh, and do ask questions. The chat's going to be open throughout. Uh, today, we have a very exciting session with Nick again. Uh, he is going to talk about how to supercharge an IT support desk using Azure OpenAI. So um, if you haven't seen Nick's episodes before, he's done some amazing sessions with us previously. Last year, he did um, a series on building uh, build, build your startup using Azure OpenAI, uh, which I can put the links in the chat. Um, and with that, I'm now going to bring him up on the stage and he will take over. Hey, Nick. Thanks for bringing me up, Raf, and uh, great to be here with everyone today. Uh, so as Raf mentioned, my name is Nick. I'm the CEO and founder of Vast Minds and also have been an AI engineer for uh, several years. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about how to supercharge, as Raf said, an IT support desk using Azure OpenAI. Um, and a little bit more than that, we're actually going to showcase how a um, how a product was built on the back of this. Um, it's called Chat MSP, um, and how that is actually delivering real value to customers. I think one of the one of the concerns I have in the OpenAI space, um, and I've explored OpenAI for a number of years, uh, even before Chat GPT, um, and I think post the whole chat GPT phenomenon, we have a lot of applications spawning um, using OpenAI or GPT-3 or 4, um, but a lot of them don't really deliver real business value. Uh, a lot of these applications are more uh, for games or, or for, for just personal pleasure. So um, today I'm going to showcase actually a, uh, a product um, that is delivering real business value. Um, and this would be specifically for managed service providers. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Rap, just let me know if you can see my screen OK. So let's try this. OK, there we go. Great. Looks like we can see my screen. So fantastic. So, so today we're going to be talking about an exciting product. It's called Chat MSP. Um, it is the audience for this product uh, is generally managed service providers, um, uh, MSPs. Uh, for anyone joining who doesn't know what an MSP is, um, they are businesses that outsource all aspects of IT, including uh, support, cybersecurity, SOC management as well. Uh, great. I can see a couple of people confirm they can see the, the slide deck, which is great. Um, but we're going to show, show you how um, a specific product called Chat MSP can help uh, reduce workload for, for MSPs um, and how it can actually act. This is the, the, the really cool thing. How it can it act as a co-pilot for service desk teams? So before we dive into it, one of the things we need to understand about MSPs are some of the main uh, challenges or problems that they face. So if we think about some of the challenges that MSP fa MSPs face on a day-to-day -day basis, um, there are four main ones, four main challenges uh, that these type of businesses face. The first one, documentation sprawl. So generally, when service desks are attempting to resolve incoming tickets or queries from clients, um, generally, it can be a bit of a nightmare to find the relevant documentation quickly. And so that leads to delays in resolving the tickets. Um, and it could, in the worst case scenario, breach SLA contracts. So a lot of MSPs use uh, documentation software to try and solve this problem. Um, or they would just store a bunch of documentation on SharePoint. Um, other popular documentation management tools for MSP include things, uh, solutions such as IT Glue or Hudu or some others as well. So um, this can be quite a challenge. So as service desk analysts are trying to resolve tickets, um, they could be 
they could be in a business that has over a hundred fully managed clients. Um, and so that is a lot of clients and a lot of pro probably a lot of documentation to deal with. So finding the right piece, finding the right document to deal with either a new starter or a specific issue can be quite uh, daunting. The second thing, which is kind of related, is that uh, engineers or service desk analysts are probably expected to remember too much information. Like I said, for MSPs who manage hundreds of, of clients, um, it can be pretty hard to be able to know how to stay within SLA contracts for all of those clients if engineers are expected to respond quickly, find documentation quickly. Um, so again, in the worst case scenario, information overload or this expectation that MSPs are um, or engineers should remember too much information can lead to breach of SLA contracts and, of course, customer dissatisfaction. And the other one is uh, scalability. So, right, especially in, in today's environment, um, which is uh, economically not the best, shall we say, um, I think scaling a service desk team is difficult. You have two main problems. If you are, if you are if, as an MSP, if you are onboarding more fully managed clients, you'll need to find more people to help manage them. And so finding the right expertise or hiring can be a problem. And that can actually limit MSP's ability to scale because if they can't find the right uh, expertise to sit as an additional member on their service desk team, um, that can also lead to, to problems. Um, and finding the right expertise can cost a lot, all right? Uh, you know, humans, uh, uh, well-skilled engineers can be quite costly. Um, so those are the two problems which kind of culminate into this, this, this major problem here, which is uh, limited scalability. So as you onboard more clients or as MSPs serve more clients, um, they find it hard to scale accordingly. Um, or if they do scale accordingly, that can squeeze profit margins, which brings us on to our next point, which is increasing profitability, right? As, as you onboard more clients, the whole goal is to not uh, squeeze out profit margins. The whole goal is to increase uh, profit margins as much as possible. Um, so right now, that, that brings us to a, a challenge that MSPs generally need to find solutions to increase their efficiency with the way um, the way they they solve tickets. Um, I've got Jim from Philly USA who mentioned a language challenge as well. So uh, Jim, that's completely right. There is a language challenge. Um, uh, English may not be, uh, you know, a lot of MSPs um, do outsource uh, service desk members to individuals in the Philippines, which can actually be a great solution. Um, but there can be a there can be a, a language barrier when communicating with with clients. So again, this need to increase profitability means that MSPs will need to find solutions to uh, increase their efficiency, um, you know, without reducing staff. That the whole goal is not to say I don't need my staff anymore. The whole goal is to say that I can make my staff or my service desk engineers much more productive so that I can serve much more clients and increase profit margins and also revenue as well. So these are the four main challenges we would see when we, when we actually spoke to MSPs over the, the, the last several months. And so we've come up with a way that we can help MSPs uh, solve this challenge. And uh, that gave birth to a product called uh, Chad MSP which is effectively an intelligent support agent, um, or you could call it a co-pilot for service desk analysts. Um, and what Chad MSP is able to do, Chad MSP is depicted by this purple brainy logo over here. Um, but if, in effect, what it's able to do is it's able to use, to scour through a bunch of existing tickets that sit in an MSP's ITSM solution. And that could be, that could be ConnectWise, that could be ServiceNow. You know, there, there are other ITSM solutions such as Autotask and Kaseya. Um, if you're not familiar with what I mean by an ITSM solution, uh, that is an IT, it's effectively a portal whereby service desks can, can manage incoming tickets and respond to tickets. It's, 
Uh, nothing more complicated than that. Um, but ConnectWise and probably ServiceNow are probably the two most popular examples of ITSM solutions on the market. Um, but in essence, Chat MSP is, um, and also unlike ChatGPT, it's able to get a very fine tuned and contextual view of specific organizations. I think that's the key here. I think when you look at something like ChatGPT, which is pretty good for generic question and answering, um, it obviously doesn't know anything about your organization. It doesn't know anything about how to solve specific challenges uh, for your customers. Um, all of that information is likely held in a documentation management software um, such as IT Glue or SharePoint and, and others. So this is, Chat MSP is able to, to, to bring in all of that information into its, let's call it its, its brain. Um, and it's able to respond with that highly contextual piece of information, which is really powerful. I think Chat GPT out of the box um, is a great showcase of the technology, um, but it's not that, I mean, the marginal benefit of using that in a business workflow um, is, not, is, not, is not that great. So Chat MSP aims to solve that. So bringing in all of this contextual information from ITSM solutions and also documentation management solutions, I would probably say IT Glue is probably one of the most popular documentation management systems. Um, some MSPs just reside their documentation in SharePoint or Hudu as well as another, another one, although I think Hudu is relatively, uh, relatively new. So, so that is Chat MSP from a, from a high level perspective. Um, and, and so now that brings us on to the point of what would now be the new workflow for MSPs? Well, MSPs have service desk analysts, which need to be able to quickly and effectively resolve incoming queries for customers. Um, that, is, that is the whole premise of their, 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 their role. Um, so you can consider in the new workflow with Chat MSP, you have an incoming query that is raised by a client. Uh, all incoming queries are probably very time sensitive. Um, those queries can be quickly addressed by Chat MSP. So Chat MSP can take that query. It can understand whether this query is related to similar tickets that exist um, in a ITSM solution. They may have been tickets that have already been resolved, but that can, but, but such that the resolution notes of that previous tickets can help with resolving this, this new ticket. Um, so that's the first thing. It's able to ingest all of that, all of the conceptual information about existing tickets. It's also able to scour documentation or runbooks about how an MSP deals with specific clients. So if this came from, let's say the incoming query was from client X, then Chat MSP could actually search for the documentation related to client X and actually understand which pieces of documentation can help in resolving this uh, specific query. Um, and what that means is that the, the first line engineer or first line engineer can use that response from Chat MSP to be able to respond to a customer. Uh, and Chat MSP can, can really summarize that highly contextual piece of information um, with, uh, for, for a specific ticket. So, and then the whole goal is to get to a resolution as fast as possible for any given incoming query. So in effect, it's like any first line engineer having a co-pilot they can work with to resolve tickets faster without trailing through mountains of documentation, which can just be an absolute headache. If you have, you know, in, in some instances, MSPs could have 30 or 40 or even hundreds of different pieces of documentation uh, for different clients. So this is now with, with Chat MSP, which is powered by Azure OpenAI. Um, this is now the new workflow where first line engineers can use to become more efficient. They can solve more tickets uh, more quickly, which helps MSPs manage more clients. And again, increase those profit margins and, and profitability. So 
one thing we will do is um, we will showcase a demo. Uh, but before I do that, um, we launched, what I will say is we launched Chat MSP uh, probably about uh, two months ago after several months of iteration. Uh, we launched it to a MSP in the UK. Uh, and we have a service desk manager from that MSP who I'd like to bring up to the stage. So Rav, if we can bring Anka up to the stage. Let's see if uh, she's there. Hi, guys. Hey, Anka, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you guys? Good, good, good. So, so Anka, do you want to just quickly introduce yourself? Um, just tell everyone a little bit about what you do and your role. Hi, I'm Anka Otet, and I'm the head of end user support at Transpotec. Um, I have over 17 years of experience in managing and implementing new support services and almost five years with uh, Transpotec. So I have quite a, 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 a big uh, experience in terms of uh, MSPs. I have worked before in MSP um, and uh, my entire experience is um, around MSPs. Fantastic, fantastic. And then if you were to, let's say, name, I would say name the main problems or challenges you face when managing a busy service desk uh, and you know, especially when you guys are attempting to now serve more and more customers and onboard more customers, um, there can be a need to, to try and be more efficient with tickets. So um, it'd be great to hear just some of the, the main challenges that you face or, or the main needs that you'd want to be solved by a solution like this. So the, the main um, problems is when you have a influx of incidents, let's say that you have um, peak times um, and we, on all the service desks, there are peak times. Um, in those peak times, it's really hard to keep up um, the, the same response levels that you'd have mm. in the, the rest of the time. So um, that is one of, of the things. And also is the, um, the communication that are going out, the language that is being used. Uh, yeah. because it, it takes time to write down a, a response or to call right. somebody and to, to get all those kind of information that you, you need. Exactly. As a service desk analyst. Yeah, sure. And I can imagine probably when clients or, or uh, customers raise issues, um, it might they, they probably are not that clear in exactly what the problem is, right? So it takes not some... Not really. <laughs> <laughs> it usually takes a little bit of time to, uh, to find out what is the problem. Uh, but in there, it comes the experience of the service desk analyst to try and to understand the culture of the customers that we have and, sure. and trying to, to grasp the, uh, around that. What we found with Chat MSP is that it helps and enhance uh, enhances their experience, and also it um, uh, drives back the time uh, for for those responses. Um, so they get on on hands all the replies that they should be able to pass back to to the customer. So uh, um, at the end, it minimizes the the mean time to to resolve uh, an incident. Yeah, and then we have an interesting point you actually raised there, which is that a highly experienced service desk analyst may already understand the context about what this customer query is. But let's say if you brought on or you brought on a new service desk analyst because you were onboarding more clients, they might they might not have the same contextual knowledge that the experienced person would have. So they may spend more time training up to become as good as or be able to respond to in the same way that that experienced. So service. from my experience, I would say that on average it takes around three months to three months. train an analyst um, that would become fully capable to handle by himself um, issues or herself, <laughs> depending. Uh, yeah. What we discovered with Chat MSP is that is uh, um, streaming line that um, timeline, and mm. it, it goes to one month. Um, you get a fully functional service desk analyst with the help of um, Chat MSP, and we have had um, a, a few. Um, new analysts that we have onboarded and we have um, had the help of chat MSP to train them. Let's say it, it, train, it's not uh, necessarily <laughs> what they they do, uh, what um, yeah. chat MSP does with, uh, with analysts, but it helps a lot um, the way that they do their uh, daily work. So it helps them, it give, gives them where the documentation is. And that is one of the feedback that we got is that when they insert the ticket, and they get the resolution, it tells them also what kind of document to use 
where yes. is that document and how it, it can help them. So they don't have to search through the databases where it might be that document that I need. So uh, at the moment to um, implement the, the resolution, they have it on hand uh, with the help of the chat MSP. Exactly, exactly. So I think uh, everyone's probably itching to see a demo. So let's say, for example, Anke, you you guys use ConnectWise. Um, ConnectWise is a is you know it's a it's a great ITSM solution. Um, but let's take an example of what Chat MSP can do. So what we can do is Chat MSP is now a product that integrates directly in Microsoft Teams um, using and we've built this using the Power Platform. Um, what we can do is hopefully everyone can see my Microsoft Teams screen. Um, but you can see here, we can actually start prompting Chat MSP to help. Let's consider now that I'm a service data analyst. Uh, I can start prompting Chat MSP to help me resolve specific tickets. So Chat, Chat MSP will respond and say, hi, I'm Chat MSP. I can help you resolve tickets in your ITSM tool. So what can I help you with today? Now, let's say, for example, we want to resolve a ticket. So we would say, let's say, I, I would like to resolve a ticket. Um, then Chat MSP would prompt me for the ticket ID from your ITSM solution. So I, I don't even need to now say, copy and paste the notes from ConnectWise uh, into this tool. Um, I can just simply give it a ticket ID. Um, and so what I, I have a ticket ID to hand here, an example. And what this ticket ID relates to is, um, it's a simple query about customers uh, wanting to create a new starter. So um, Anka, question for you. Um, generally in your experience, uh, do you find that let's say a new starter you know, request can be quite simple, but do you find that the steps involved can be highly dependent on the actual client? So new starters for specific client A could be very different from the new starter for client B, for example. Yes, um, you can have different type of steps, different type of environments, different type of applications, different type of rights that they are entitled to get as a new starter. Yeah. So you'll have different um, types of accesses that you have to give and different type of processes, approvals, workflows that you have behind uh, a new starter. So um, the, the new, new starters are the bundle type of uh, requests that you have, and they are quite complex sometimes. They can be really simple. And mm -hmm. we have uh, clients and customers that they, they prefer to have a really simple new starter um, process, but there, we have others that have a really complex one. And to differentiate that and especially if you have um, a shared um, service desk, because we can, we can have the dedicated yeah. one and with those, it's a bit um, more simple. But mm -hmm. when you have a shared desk where you have analysts that are providing support services to five or six clients, then yeah. uh, they need that kind of information on hand and to be able to, to resolve those kind of queries as soon as possible, um, obviously within the given timeline for, for that client. Exactly, exactly. So, so we have for this ticket, Chad MSP re responded with some simple steps, um, but they're highly contextual and related to this specific client. Um, and so these are the steps that the service desk analyst would need to follow to create this new starter. Um, and there is a specific document related to this client called new starter and leave a process. Um, so now a service desk analyst doesn't have to spend time going through documentation to find this. Uh, Chad MSP has said, yes, a document exists relating to new starters and leavers. Um, it can just simply pull in all of the information from the ticket ID and actually generate the steps needed to, to resolve this. Um, and now let's say, for example, um, Anka, do you, do you find it painful, let's say, to, um, or do you find that maybe service desk analysts find, it, find they spend time following up with tickets that might not be closed, they might be resolved, but they're still waiting for, let's say, customer acceptance. Does that take time? Yes. <laughs> no, you have to say, hey, look, can we resolve this now? Is everything okay? That is one of the, the major things um, is to get the follow-up from um, the client to um, actually uh, accept the resolution and you, um, say to you that, yes, you can close the ticket. And that is one yes. of the things that we keep um, and we pride ourselves. We always have to uh, um, get the acceptance from the, um, the customer that the issue yeah. has been resolved. Yeah, exactly. So, so this can be, you know, it can be quite a mundane process. You know, clients don't always, customers don't always respond immediately. Um, 
So let's see how Chad MSP can solve this. So another command that Chad MSP has learned is how to follow up with clients. Uh, so the first thing that Chad MSP will do actually in an instant is it would actually give us the list of ticket IDs that have been, that are open, but are waiting on a customer response. So now we know that we have one, two, three, four, we have four ticket IDs sitting in this ITSM solution, which need the, the customer to, to actually close. Um, and so Anchor, would the general process be to, let's say a new service desk analyst is following up, they would go into this ticket, they would go into ConnectWise Manage, they would understand what's happened, they would write an email, they'll send it to a client, Yes, they will have to go through the entire history of the ticket to uh, grasp what's going on, what was the last action, what is the next action, um, uh, and then follow up with an email and probably after that with a phone call. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what we're going to see Chad MSB do now is we've just given it an example ticket to follow up on. And what it will do is you can see here it's understanding what has happened in this ticket so far, because there could have been you know, a multitude of steps. They could have been raised to the second line, second line could have done something, raised this to the third line. Um, and not only that, it is drafted an entire email that we can copy and paste and send to the customer with contextual information about what's actually happened during the journey, every step of the journey during this ticket. Um, and, uh, and it's very high level. It doesn't reveal any support agents' names. It's just a high level email that it could send to the customer. Um, and it's perfect English. I, I guess, Anchor, that might be one of the problems, right? It's yes, perfect it, English. <laughs> especially when you try to type everything in a rush and try to fix multiple tickets at the same time. Uh, yeah. We have discovered that, yeah, that, that might be sometimes a problem. Exactly. Or you pass, uh, you copy paste another, the right one. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So you can imagine a world where you're actually just telling Chad MSP, I don't want to have to follow up with all these tickets. Uh, you know, they're annoying. Why don't you just understand what's happened, draft an email and actually send that to customers? That could be, you know, a lot of help for uh, service desk analysts. Um, and then let's, let's go over another example or another command, um, which is whereby, let's say a new ticket lands uh, on, let's say, a second line engineer. So first line raises a new ticket to second line engineer. Um, and let's say there could have been multiple steps involved or multiple back and forth uh, steps of communication involved between the customer and the first line engineer. Um, the second line engineer would have to review those steps, understand what's happened, understand exactly what's happened in the chain and understand the current status of that ticket. But what we could tell Cloud MSP to do is we could tell it to uh, prompt it with a command called case summary. Um, and why don't we just do the same one we did previously? Uh, so Chad MSP can tell us, I can generate you a case summary for a ticket. Please let me know which ID this is for. So what it's doing, similar to uh, what it did in the, the, the first step, it is understanding the contextual information about the, this journey of the ticket. What has happened to this ticket throughout its life cycle? Um, it's given us a summary. Uh, of exactly what's happened. So it says the customer, Paul, contacted the support agent to report a broken link for downloading the app. The support agent apologized for the inconvenience and provided an updated link for the app download um, and so on. It's also given us the event chain from the ticket. So we know that Paul raised this on the 19th um, and um, we have one of a, the support agents have provided an email for an updated link for the mobile and desktop app uh, and instructions on how to access it. Now, this is a good uh, this is a good example because this ticket is currently waiting on customer. It's a ticket which needs to be closed, uh, which needs to be followed up with. But in an instant, we can get Chad MSP to just give us an exact rundown of the summary of the ticket, exactly what's happened during the life cycle of the ticket, and also the status. Is it closed? Is it waiting for a customer? What's the priority? Um, so we can get it by just uh, saying a few commands. And if you think about how this is so different from something like ChatGPT, it is highly fine-tuned to an organization so that they can effectively deploy this as a co-pilot. Um, you know, it would kind of be at the scale of, let's say, an average service desk analyst, not a completely junior one, not completely uh, expert level one, 
but let's say an, an average service desk analyst. Um, but yeah, Anka, thank you very much for uh, thank you very much for joining. I know you have you are one of the first users of Chat MSP, and we have many more companies now on the waitlist. So <clears throat> yeah, it's great to get your feedback, and uh, we hope you enjoy to continue to use Chat MSP in your day-to-day uh, -day business. We sure do. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Anka. Thank you. Bye -bye. So, um, so what you just saw there is just a demonstration of chat, how Chat MSP can work directly within um, within Teams, and effectively, the, the whole point is to produce three outcomes. The first is to help manage service providers handle more customers uh, at a lower cost with a, a crazily good uh, mean time to resolution. Um, so, Chat MSP eff effectively aims to deliver all three aspects of these. And uh, I'm going to wrap up shortly just so we can take any questions. If um, I, I do want to leave a, a lot of time for questions. Um, but one thing I would say is that since the launch, we've had um, extremely high demand for uh, waitlist spots. Uh, we have three waitlist spots left. So if, if you're an if you're an MSP um, and you're looking to use Chat MSP uh, directly within Teams, um, uh, directly within Teams for your for your service desk, um, we have three waitlist spots. You'll be able to try it free for 30 days um, with discounted pricing thereafter for the next 12 months. So uh, we have three left. Unfortunately, we are a relatively small team, so we can't handle more than uh, three, uh, three spots right now. Um, we have on total 40 MSPs on the wait list, which is, which is great. It's great to see such, such great demand for a product like this. Um, but in essence, I, wanna, I want to close there. Um, I, I hope you found that insightful and interesting. I think one of the things is, one of the things we wanted to highlight is the fact that uh, OpenAI and ChatGPT has created a, a great buzz around how we can disrupt our current enterprise workflows. Um, but I think most of the solutions being produced in the last quarter or in Q1 um, were more, most of them were more uh, hype driven rather than actually value driven. Um, so um, it was really interesting to, to, to build a product um, have this actually released um, that can actually help deliver real value to customers. Um, I do actually see some waitlist spots coming in right now, so I, I will leave this up if anyone wants to, uh, if anyone wants to scan this and and we can move on. But yeah, with that, Rav, I'd love to I'd love to close um, and take any questions from the audience. Um, and uh, and uh, do we have any questions from the audience right now? Let's let's have a look. So there's one question from Jim. Uh, it's on your screen. So can, can Chat MSP also create a change request to correct the missing link on the website so that there are no more broken links? Yeah. So <clears throat> I, I, I guess this could be, let's say, um, this could be a generic issue. Let's say if a customer is um, is referencing a broken link on their website somewhere. Um, and so people keep touching that link and it goes to a 404 page. Then uh, China, China, uh, Chat MSP in its current form, it can't create requests. It can actually tell you how to solve uh, queries. Um, but yes, in the next iteration of Chat MSP, uh, it will become an agent. And so what I mean by that is Chat MSP won't just be a, um, a way for you to, to help deliver responses um, about certain queries, but it'd actually be able to become an agent and take action. So in this case, uh, where we have a broken link, Chat MSP would be able to create the re change request um, and with the necessary credentials, be able to change that to the correct link. Um, and that's the real power of agents in a enterprise workflow. So, so I hope that uh, answers your question. Then we have one more question. How can we build our own chat MSP from scratch according to our own requirements? Any guidance? Yeah, sure. So if let's say you have a requirement to be able to chat with um, chat with your own documents or, or things like that, um, 
then it will take um, it will take some fine tuning to be able to do that. Um, in in I mean, Chat MSP itself is a little bit more complicated in that in that uh, it does require complex parsing of existing tickets, existing documentation, referencing documentation. So it's a bit more complex in its parsing mechanisms, uh, which is slightly outside the scope of of this uh, uh, this webinar, but. Um, if you were to create your own simple chat, but that be able to chat with your documents, um, I would recommend. Uh, I would recommend actually using. Um, you could actually use a Chat GPT. I think there are plugins for Chat GPT where you can upload a document um, and you can ask questions based on that. Um, but it really depends. I, I would encourage you to think about a specific use case. Um, if you were to to build, you know, and let's say an equivalent of Chat MSB for your own requirements. Maybe this could be for businesses that are looking to have a customer facing chatbot um, that can answer generic questions about their business. Um, you can use actually simple web scraping tools to, to build that knowledge base into chat MSP or into whatever your chat system is at that point. Um, but yeah, chat MSP in, in its current form um, is, is uh, actually conducts a lot of uh, a lot of complex chunking techniques to be able to build all of this information into his brain, but um, but yeah, I'd encourage you to explore your own use cases for sure. So, question uh, we have from Nelson: <coughs> Is Chat MSP limited to MSPs, or can it be used for other service desks that also use ITSM ticketing tool? And similar knowledge based repositories. Yeah, so you know, it's not just MSPs who use ITSM solutions. Um, you know, other service desks use ITSM solutions like ServiceNow and others. Um, and we are actually released, so Chat MSP specifically works very well with MSPs uh, right now. Um, we are actually releasing another product called Chat SDT, uh, which would work quite well with other service desks that use. Um, ITSM solutions such as ServiceNow and others. Um, so yes, absolutely, it would depend. Um, I'd be curious to know, Nelson, what existing ITSM solution you use. I assume it would be ServiceNow. I know, I know a lot of other service desks use ServiceNow. Uh, you could just reply yes if that's correct. But yeah, we can. I'm happy to take a follow-up call and we can discuss that. Um, we have another question from Jim. Is there a base level of knowledge that chat MSB comes with, like how to open a new MS Word document or how to fix a printer driver? Yeah, so I mean chat MSP, the way to the, the, the way to the way to think about it is chat MSP already has access to public a public repository of knowledge in the same way that chat GPT does. Right. So when we use Azure OpenAI, we already inherit uh, a lot of those, the, a lot of those capabilities, um, but but in essence, for specific MSPs, um, Chat MSP effectively gets um, effectively gets born as a brand new thing, so it's completely tailored to that organization. And generally, I would say most as a, most MSPs we speak to um, already have at least three years worth of ticket data that sit in an ITSM solution. Um, so at that point, that is enough uh, to be able to uh, that is enough to be able to try and transform Chat MSP into a tool that is really useful for that organization. So um, the simple answer is we try and reset Chat MSP's knowledge knowledge level for each organization, just because each organization, more likely than not, has a sufficient amount of ticket data that you would want to retrain Chat MSP on. Um, but yes, it would know generic things such as how to fix a specific printer driver or, you know, how to open an MS Word document. Um, okay. And another question. Can an example source code documentation be made available to public so we can build on that, especially documentation for Power Platform on which chat MSB is built on, e.g. flows and actions? Yeah, so um, I actually did another video. I think this was probably a couple of weeks ago um, where we looked at how to build a chat MSP-like bot with flows and actions. Um, 
I mean, the source code for China, China MSP is proprietary, um, but I, I do do uh, webinars. Maybe actually we could do another webinar specifically on how to build um, chatbots using Power Platform that integrate with Azure OpenAI. I have actually got a lot of requests, um, a lot of requests for that. But there are, when you use, let's say, Power Automate or Power Virtual Platforms or the Power Platform in general with Azure OpenAI, it is powerful in that you don't need to specify so many flows and actions. That the, the problem with building on Power Platform now um, is that you do have to specify lots of different flows and actions for different types of topics. Um, but with Azure OpenAI, you don't need to specify so many flows or actions. It kind of just figures out what, what to do. Um, so maybe we can, we can actually do another webinar on Power Automate and how to, to go into that a little bit deeper. Okay, great. I think that was the last question. Fantastic. Do we have any more questions or we can call that a wrap for today? I will say though, those uh, three waitlist spots just got filled up. So thank you for... <laughs>I think um, Nick Hill probably lost his connection, but yeah, he's back again. Yeah, he's I'm back. back. Sorry, about, sorry about that glitch. Um, yeah, I was just saying. Uh, I was just saying uh, that that uh, the three waitlist spots actually got filled up. Um, so thank you for for those people who uh, filled that in. I think we got a couple more questions. Yes. Yeah, we've that, just had uh, one more question. Uh, sorry, two more questions. Yeah. One from Sony. How long? How long does it take to integrate? In, integrate. Yeah. So this is a good question. So generally, um, our de facto answer for this is, if let's say, um, if we, let's say we have an MSP that wants to to deploy Chat MSP to their organization. Um, we would say post giving the API keys and post us being able to validate access to their ITSM tool and their documentation tool. It takes 1.5 weeks to us, for us to be able to train Chat MSP to become very tailored to answering tickets for their organization. Um, after one and a half weeks has elapsed, we then deploy a their own personal Chat MSP that is spread across their organization. All of their service desk analysts can then use it from that point. So I would say about uh, one and a half weeks post API access. Okay, another question from Jim. How does chat MSP figure out whether the ticket data is correct? Doesn't it rely on good ticket data? Yeah, and um, you know, MSPs are usually pretty good at, or ITSM solutions are pretty good at marking um, or showing you which tickets have been resolved. Um, and so what we do, what, what Chat MSP does is it tries to train itself on only resolved tickets because a resolved ticket would have a customer acceptance on the back of it. So um, if we assume that the customer acceptance, um, if, the, if there is a customer acceptance, then I think we can assume that that ticket data is pretty good. Um, but we do have an additional check because sometimes let's say service desk analysts won't always put complete uh, resolution notes in a ticket. Uh, so for that, you know, for, for those cases, China MSP does have to kind of figure out a more broader contextual piece of how was this ticket sold from the first point of entry to the journey that it had. Maybe it had several back and forth between the client to then the resolution. The resolution might not be complete, but from that highly contextual journey, um, it can figure out exactly how the, the ticket was solved. Um, Pretty well. So um, I think Jim mentioned again another session on how to build would be wonderful. So yeah, we can Great. we can discuss that later, Nick. And then uh, Joban Preet says when we can expect the next session and link to last webinars. I I will put the link to the to your previous webinars in the chat. And then Sonny says, how many tickets can chat MSP handle in an hour? 
Yeah, this is a good question. We currently don't have, um, because we use serverless compute in Azure, uh, in theory, it could handle thousands of tickets per hour. Um, and if you consider the average MSP on a high volume day would probably be able to ingest maybe 90 tickets per day. Um, so if you think about that exponential increase in, in amount of tickets being able to handle across an hour or day, yeah, it's huge with this type of technology. Okay, and Jim asks again, since orgs change often, how often is retraining needed? Yeah, so I, I'm not sure I'm completely clear on this answer, but I, I will still try to answer it. So let's say, for example, uh, a customer of, a, of an MSP um, is on a specific platform, but they will change platforms over time, right? So that means that the way you would resolve queries for those customers will have to change over time. Um, so that is also a challenge. So uh, the, the way we've implemented it in Chat MSP is it has a retraining mechanism that runs every day and, and also every week, um, whereby it looks at new tickets, uh, it tries to spot trends in how different tickets are dealt. Um, it applies more importance on recent tickets. Um, so you do get that Chat MSP not only has contextual information, but it has some kind of recency score. So if you had, let's say, two identical tickets that could help that have occurred, maybe one occurred one month ago, the other occurred three months ago, they're identical um, and they could both help to resolve a ticket, Chat MSP would place more importance on the ticket that it would occur that occurred about a month ago. So you have some more, um, you have some more relevance, you have some more importance that's placed on more recent tickets. It's as simple as that. Okay, I think um, we can wait a few more minutes if there's any more questions. For sure. Uh, like Rab mentioned in the chat though, you can, uh, you can find all of my previous sessions in, oh, there we go. We've, we've got the YouTube link in there, uh, in the chat. Jim has another question. When we roll out new products slash updates, do you have a process to pre-train for a new release? So let's say if you roll out a new product or an update and there is new documentation relating to this product or update, then yes, the, the, pre, the, the retraining process that happens on a daily or weekly basis will be able to ingest that new information um, and move forward with a new set of information in its brain. So uh, yeah, I mean, we have a automated process which runs for a chat MSP, like I mentioned on a daily and weekly schedule. Another question from Jobin Preet. How long it took for you and your team to make chat MSP from scratch? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've been, uh, so myself and, and uh, Lewis, who, who is another engineer who um, is, is one of our research scientists, um, what we've been, I mean, we've been f quite familiar with the GPT technology uh, from the very first instance that LLMs came to play. So this is way before uh, ChatGPT. Um, so we already have pretty extensive knowledge about how LLMs operate, um, where, how they hallucinate as well, um, what, what can make them answer in a very strange way. Um, so I would say probably took us um, uh, probably several months back, we decided to build uh, Chat MSP. Um, and we got it to a, I would say we got it to a full production ready grade version in about seven months. Um, but that was just to manage expectations. We started that from a highly experienced set of understanding of how these LLMs worked. So, um, so yeah, I would encourage, I mean, th there are just tons of YouTube videos out there on, on, on how to understand LLMs. So I would definitely encourage everyone to try and educate themselves on this technology.
Um, right, we have another question. I think there was a spacing problem over here. So we already have quite an extensive in-house knowledge base in service now. Can we limit chat MST, MSP to just quickly telling us what what we actually already know? Um, well, in effect, yes. That the, the, the whole goal of chat MSP is to be able to quickly help you retrieve information that exists in your knowledge base. So in your case, it would be ServiceNow. Um, so if you have an extensive knowledge base, in-house knowledge base in ServiceNow, Chat MSP would be able to extract all of that information into its brain um, and be able to quickly retrieve pieces of information uh, from that knowledge base that relate to your question. So yes, absolutely. The whole point of Chat MSP is to be a is to be a highly fine-tuned, call it co-employee for service desk analysts. So um, absolutely it could do that. And also, uh, uh, if Jim doesn't, if, if Jim wants another question, more than happy for him to to come up onto the stage as well. So. <laughs> cool. Any more questions? I think that's a wrap, Rav. Um, yes, I think so too. But either way, um, well, I just want to say thank you for everyone who tuned in. Um, Definitely join the meetup here, the QR code on the screen. Um, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, if you'd like to discuss Chat MSP for your, for your business, then uh, happy to do so. Uh, you can reach out to either me, my colleague, Lewis, or Sonny, um, and I would be more than happy to discuss this with you. Okay, brilliant. I, I'm just going to put your LinkedIn in the chat now um, for anyone to connect. And yeah, thanks, Nick, for another great session. Fantastic. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a great day and hopefully see you soon.